Hello, this video is on the factorial moment generating function. We call it eta of x of t, and it's for a random variable or vector x. Um, it's defined as eta of t is the expected value of t to the x, where t is a real number, and this is assuming that this exists. Um, sometimes it's called a Mellon Stilts transformation, assuming I pronounced the names right. Um, the eta of 1 is the expected value of 1 raised to the x, which is 1, which equals 1. And this is related to the moment generating function by through log of t, this transformation here. Um, and if you take this definition and take derivatives of the, the uh, factorial moment generating function, it's this, and then assuming we can pass the derivative through the integral sign, or the expectation, then we get this. And the derivative of t to the x becomes this, where this last uh, is t to the x minus n. So this is what's often called a falling factorial, or you know, and hence we'll call it a factorial moment. Um, if we evaluate the nth derivative at t, this piece here is a 1 and it goes away and we're left with the uh, factor the nth factorial moment and it's, and it's called the nth factorial moment because there's n terms there's 1 2 all the way to n terms um, now primarily this is useful in discrete distributions not continuous but I'll give an example of how to calculate it in the normal setting but it's, again, it's not as useful in the, in the, in the continuous setting. Um, how, how we use this is, is when we're calculating the variance, which is this is the standard formula here. But if we calculate the second factorial moment and then add e to the x, expected value, that's equivalent to this. And this, and this piece here is often much, much easier to calculate than the, than the, the second moment of a discrete distribution. And then, of course, we take the you know, minus the expected value quantity squared. Um, so what this means is if, um, if we take the second derivative of the factorial moment generating function, or second derivative of eta, um, this piece right here is this one. And then the first derivative evaluated at t is this, and of course the first derivative evaluated at t equals one, t equals one squared. And so this is how we're calculating the variance. And then I just wanted to point out, I think I have an, another video where I talk about falling factorials or rising factorials is the same thing. And there's not a standard notation. Sometimes it's written like this, Sometimes it's written with the x to the n with a bar under it, and it just means it's a falling factorial, which is defined like this. Rising factorial, the bar would be on top. But So let's go through an example. Here we have a binomial distribution. x goes from 0 to n, and the uh, eta of t is the expected value of t to the x, so we put in t to the x, and and then times the probability of x, sum over all possible values. Um, well, this we can we can combine the t and the and the p raised to the x, and then this is just a binomial expansion of this quantity here. So this is the uh, factorial moment generating function. And so, if we take the first derivative of eta and evaluate it t equals zero. So here, you know, you bring the, the n out front, and it's n minus 1, and you take it times the derivative of the inside. That's what this is. But then evaluated at t equals 1, then um, that's 1, and, and you get the p and the minus p cancel, and you get 1 raised to n minus 1, which is 1, so you get n times p. And we know that that's n p is the, mo the first moment of a, of a binomial. So to calculate the variance, we need the second factorial moment. So we need to take the second derivative. So we need to take the derivative of the first derivative 
and then we get this quantity here. We evaluate it at t equals 1. We get n times n minus 1 p squared. So to calculate the variance, we take the uh, second moment or the second derivative of the factorial moment generated function. And then this is the plus the first moment. And then minus the mean squared, we get this, which uh, is this, and then reduces to this, which is NPQ, which we know as the variance of a binomial distribution. So that's how it's used in a discrete distribution. Now, um, what is not known, and I could not find this in the internet anywhere, <laughs> to, and nor have I seen it, but I thought I'd, I'd add this just to show that it does work for the continuous case, but it's again not used as much. Just the moment generating function or the characteristic function is much more used in the continuous setting versus the um, factorial moment generating function. But let's assume we have a normal distribution and we find the factorial moment generating function is defined like this. So it says stick in t to the x times the probability of x. So instead of just t to the x, I raise it, uh, I take the log and then take the e of it. So remember this x could act technically be t to the x, but since it's log, we take it out front. And I do that because now we have e on both, and then we can combine that. So what we do is we multiply by minus 2 sigma squared divided by 2 sigma squared, so we get a like denominator here. When we add those, it breaks down to this. And I squared that to get x squared minus 2 mu x plus um, mu squared. So what we'll do is we'll complete the square with this. So this uh, mu squared will kind of fall away. And then we add and subtract the well-chosen zero. And it boils down to this. So this is the, the function after we complete the square. And then this is the piece that's kind of left over that's a constant in regards to x. And so this is a normal distribution, x minus some mean divided you know, by uh, minus 2 sigma squared, you know, the appropriate normalizing constant. So this is 1, and it goes away. So we're left with this, which then can be, you know, you've, you expand this uh, squared term, and it becomes this and you reduce and you get this. And so this is actually the factorial moment generating function for a normal distribution. So let's use it. So the first derivative evaluated at uh, one, but let's, well, let's first take the first derivative. And since this is e to a, 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 a function of t, so you get this back and then times the derivative of the top, which is this. So now let's, uh, and then reduce, and it becomes this. Now this is just the, um, the again, the factorial moment generated function. And we know that this evaluated at 1 is, is 1. So it's easy to, uh, I just left it like this because it's easy to evaluate. And you can see that when you put in 1 here, log of 1 is 0, log of 1 is 0, so e to the 0 is 1. So when we take the first derivative of eta at evaluated at 1, we get this, which is mu, which we know to be the mean of a normal distribution. Now take the second moment of, or the second derivative of eta, and so you take the derivative of the first derivative, and it boils down to this. I'm not going to go through the detail. I think in a later video I might uh, expand upon this, but for this one I'm not. This is the second derivative. So when we evaluate it at one, so this is one, that's uh, mu, this is zero, mu squared, which is this term. This is one, uh, we get sigma squared, um, one, so minus mu. So this is the uh, second factorial moment. So to calculate the variance, which is the uh, second derivative of eta evaluated at one, and then time, uh, plus this, and so we plug in here, we get this, which is this piece here. And the uh, first moment was mu, 1 minus mu. So when we combine those, we get sigma squared, which we know to be the variance. 
So that's how the mom or the factorial moment generated function can be used to find uh, uh, the mean and the variance of a of a distribution. So one note that I'm not going to expand in very far, and that's the probability generating function. So what we just used this eta um, can actually be used as what's called a probability distribution. So if uh, if we have a discrete non-negative random variable, and uh, say of x and y, and they're independent, it's an easy way to find the distribution of x plus y is this probability generating function, um, and it's done like this. So the the um, eta is defined by the expected value of t to the x, which is this. So, but then when you take certain, when you start taking derivatives of it, you're kind of left with, you know, an x and then an x minus 1 and an x minus 2. You get that factorial type situation that we've seen before. But when you evaluate it at 0 and then, of course, divide by n factorial, you get the probability of the nth value back. And... Um, Anyway, so that's a really all I'm going to say about the probability generating function, but eta can be used to find factorial moments or the actual probability of an event happening. And uh, well, that's all I have for today. Um, if you liked it, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. The next video will be on the joint characteristic functions. And that's it. See you then. Thanks. Bye.